Well, we are joined now in studio by Yuval David, filmmaker, director, actor, and activist. Yuval, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. To give for us a on. sort of better look at what actually happens inside these studios, because this is not the first such story I've heard where all Jewish character and Jewish mentions are completely erased yeah, from we're, the movie. We're dealing with a massive issue of erasure. With this war, it's brought to light this existential threat that's facing the Jewish people. But that's not only in the battle of anti. Semitism that we're seeing with the demonstrations and the riots around the world, or the battle with Hamas and Hezbollah. It's a total erasure, our existence within our narrative. And sadly, we're seeing this in Hollywood. I, I wish that the anti-Semites were right that we run Hollywood, because obviously we don't. If we ran Hollywood, we wouldn't be erased from a narrative that this film is about. They have removed the name Jew. They've removed the word Jew, rather. And now there's a backlash, so they're trying to course correct. It strikes me as an offshoot of an ideological position that we've seen overwhelm Hollywood in recent years and take over every single facet of existence in the studios. How did Hollywood get so thoroughly co-opted by the extreme progressive ideology and how did it turn on the same Jews that were in many cases champions of the ideology? Well, I'm part of the, the uh, communities that you mentioned, the left, the progressive, the liberal, and the Hollywood communities. We're seeing this massive, massive issue that many of us have been speaking about about for decades, and we've been treated as if we were crying wolf about anti-Semitism not rising because it's already risen. It's been around, and now we just turned the lights on, uh, addressing these specific issues that are going on. Now, what is happening here? It's the marketing and the PR that are worried that they'll lose their audience base, they'll lose their demographic if they talk about Jewish issues. Because right now, according to many people around the world, being Jewish is not cool, is not sexy, is not hip, and will not sell tickets to the shows. So it's up to us as Jews in Hollywood and Jews around the world to do the advocacy, to share our narratives, to empower ourselves and to prove that our stories should be told and that our stories should be told by us, not only by having other people tell our stories. And nobody, nobody can erase our narrative. I'm a grandchild of Holocaust survivors. When I saw that this film was changing the way they described a heroic man's efforts to save hundreds, 600, was it, 669 Jewish children, primarily Jewish children. There were other children who were amongst those as well. And they took out the word Jew. I found that deeply offensive. And I speak as a grandchild of Holocaust survivors, not just somebody in Hollywood, not just a director, who under, an actor who understands the industry, and not just as a Jewish advocate. You bring up a very interesting question about which is downstream from which. Is entertainment downstream from culture or vice versa? Because you said being a Jew is not hip these days. But is the entertainment media responding to a trend in the youth, or is the youth responding to a trend in entertainment and culture? It's both that are happening at the same time. One is listening to the other. Where The Hollywood industry is paying attention to what is happening on social media. Hashtag Free Palestine is a much more popular hashtag than hashtag Am Israel Chai. Most people don't even know how to spell Am Israel Chai, let alone pronounce it. So we're having an issue where we need more people to go online to share the stories of our people and Hollywood will respond. Hollywood and media, including here at I-24, are not dictating to the population what the population needs to know. It's the population that is also affecting the media and entertainment industries. We need to raise our voices. If we want to see Jewish people represented in a much better light, then we need to represent ourselves and not only wait for the film industry to do so. They're trying to sell tickets. It is an industry. It's a business. Who is going to buy the most amount of tickets or rent or purchase the film on their home devices. They want to make sure that they can sell and make money. We need to prove that our stories are interesting enough to sell. That is a challenge. You're describing what's an uphill battle. There's 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. There's 1.5 billion Chinese people in the world that are opposed to the Western narrative. There's 15 million Jews. Yes, there are 15, I think it's 15.3 million Jews, 6 million of which live in the United States. Um, so Hollywood, obviously, based in the US, those Jewish people need to share how this story not only is about the Jewish people, but it also resonates for other people. This story, specifically about Winston, uh, 
uh, Sir Winston, is a story of heroism, a story of helping children, a story of his own narrative when he saw people who needed to be saved. That is a story that can resonate with so many people, not only Jewish people. What we're facing now, this existential threat, also resonates for other people, for other marginalized and victimized minorities. We are a people whose narrative is not only about our victimhood, it's a narrative of determination, it's a narrative of survival, and when somebody who's not of our community helps us, well, we have to say, we plant a tree in their honor. We let them know that they are an amazing person for doing what any human being should do and should have done. Now we're facing a time where the issue is we're seeing a lot of people who are against us and are not doing what human beings should be doing right now. So that's what I hope this film will do, will help us within our own narrative, within our own advocacy initiatives. And in your own experience from inside Hollywood, <laughs> I, I, I want to address more of that as well. Did you yourself see just blatant anti-Semitism? 100%. I've been seeing it for, for years when I often as an actor was referred to as too Jewish or not Jewish enough, where I had multiple auditions and screen tests for roles where they would say, could you do it more Jewish? And I would say, okay, how's this? Or wait a second, hold on. How's this? Am I more Jewish now? Oh, are you trying to have me be like this? Is this what more Jewish is or more like this? Does, do I have to talk like this? Like, what is being more Jewish? That's something that I've heard for such a long time. And there have been people who told me that I should change my name because it's not mainstream enough, that it won't sell enough tickets. Other than that, People have also said to me and other people like me who are outspoken about their Jewish identity, their support of Israel, their being Zionist, people said maybe you should silence that a little bit. Maybe that will affect your ability to work within this industry because it will alienate potential audiences. This is an industry. It is a business. But to what other demographic do you say, you should be less black, or maybe you're not black enough, or can you be more queer? You're not queer enough. Or should you be more white or more Christian or more or less or hide who you are? You know, it's this double standard that we're facing. And what's going on now, we're seeing so many people, we're entering a award season. We're seeing so many people who are worried about what they're going to say on the red carpets of the Golden Globes, of the Oscars. Are they going to say free Palestine or will they speak about our hostages who are still being held captive? It's a situation where people that really don't have the expertise to make these comments are tasked with being the representatives of entire nations. You've all, thank you so much for giving us this glimpse inside the industry and inside, I guess, everyone's sort of collective nightmare about it. Thank you so much for having me. 